so I'd like to do like some advertisement uh, how you can actually use the 1D and 0D modeling in Symbascular. And it's pretty easy. Um, so if you already have, so right now everything starts from uh, 3D. So like our pay pipeline is entirely based on you having already like a, a 3D model set up. Of course, like in the future, maybe we'll include some methods where you can create these models from scratch. But right now, um, a common workflow in the lab would be to use these reduced order models complementary to your 3D models. For example, for boundary condition tuning, or if you want to perform some UQ or just like getting started with the model and just trying to figure out how everything works, um, it could make a lot of sense to, to start that process um, with uh, a 1D or 0D model because they're just that quick uh, to compute. Um, and you can run them locally. So like, uh, whereas for the 3D models, you would use several hours on uh, a cluster. Uh, these reduced order models, you can calculate them in seconds to, to minutes, depending like how big the model is and like, how many cardiac cycles you want. Um, so, and now I'm gonna show you how you can create these reduced order models in Symascular. So here um, I have a 3D model of, oops, um, of an A order. Okay, so that's my 3D geometry. Um, and then in this project, I've already gone ahead and created um, that reduced order modeling um, plugin. So just by right click here, create drum simulation job, I've created that. Um, and so for every reduced order model, um, we always start out with the center line. So the first step is to compute the center line. So I've selected here my 3D mesh, and then I have to select an inlet face. So that's inflow. And then there's just a button uh, that says calculate center lines. Um, and then it actually takes a little bit, also like depending on how big your model is. And so what Simascla is doing in the background is um, extracting this center line that you see here on the left. So you can see the 3D model and the center line geometry. Um, and what we do in the background is we split up the model into branches and junctions. So you see like two junctions in blue and in between um, the vessel branches. And the branches are the parts that we model uh, with uh, the 1D or 0D model as Jonathan explained in his uh, theory part. And so basically every, every vessel part here on the left gets replaced by this straight pipe that has a certain uh, cross section um, and is connect and those pipes are connected at the junctions. But that's basically on the right, what you see here, that is what we are modeling with uh, the reduced order models. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks very different from the original 3D vessel, but yeah, as we've seen, like this is usually enough to, to give you like at least meaningful pressure and flow results at the caps, even in this highly simplified model. Um, Okay, now it says extract center line stun in the lower left corner. Um, then basic parameters are just yeah, your usual fluid properties. Um, here I've already gone ahead and copy pasted the boundary conditions from the 3D model. So those are exactly the same like RCRs at the outlet and prescribed velocities at the inlet. Um, so currently uh, we don't have a method yet to just automatically copy those over. But um, yeah, so let's say you wanted to in boundary conditions, you would iterate over those values, recompute your zero D solution, and then look at the changed results. Uh, one thing to note uh, also is uh, in the 3D model, we define inflow as negative. And for 1D and zero D models, we define inflow as positive. So that's uh, maybe we we'll maybe should change that in the future, but right now keep that in mind um, uh, that the convention is different. Um, yeah, then you can uh, enter some um, wall properties. Um, so we have two different uh, material laws implemented for the vessel wall. Um, and then as for the 3D model, you have, you can choose a time number of time steps and a time step size and where you want to um, write those results to, to a file. Um, yeah, and then um, you can actually already go ahead and run a simulation. Um, and so for this whole plugin, you have a choice in the top right corner to um, choose between 1D um, or 0D simulation. So everything works the same. Um, so you can just switch the model order. Um, and so now, so now we're going to leave it at 0D. And so when you hit create files for simulation, um, 
yeah, um, Semascular creates an input file for the ZOD solver. Um, so if you, oops, um, if you navigate to the project folder, there's a folder um, ROM simulations, and there's our ROM simulation job. Um, and then you can see a 0D solver file has been created. And so that contains all the information for the 0D solver. Um, so here are the actual 0D elements. Um, here's the inflow, and then there's also boundary conditions. Um, so that tells the 0D solver everything it needs to solve the model. And then um, there's another button that actually runs the simulation. Um, so that takes a couple of seconds. And yeah, now the zero D simulation already has been completed. So now there are no there are some um, NumPy output files, um, and then we can convert those results um, here. Um, so I'm also gonna demo that quickly. Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna choose the output folder, um, and then we're gonna convert it in the same directory, and then you can choose like what values you want to export. Um, and then there are a couple of options. So you can um, export those results to NumPy in a way where the results are already sorted by branch. So like for each branch, you get um, pressure and flow. Um, so, and the sorting by branch can make it easier to actually figure out in the end where those um, zero D results belong to in your 3D geometry. Um, then we also have an option to project those results back onto the center line. And we can also project them back onto the 3D mesh. Um, so we're going to hit convert and I'm going to show you in power view what those projected results actually look like. Um, so on the left, we have um, a zero D solution that has been projected back onto the center line. So we get this like nice spatial display um, of our pressures. Um, so if you are interested in like, yeah, the spatial distribution of the pressures, and then we also have a method to project those pressures onto the 3D mesh. Um, uh, so you can either use that for visualization or um, Jonathan and I recently published a paper where you can use that, um, those projected um, 1D or 0D results as initial conditions for your 3D results. And so we not only um, project the pressure, but we also project um, the flow onto the center line. And from that, we extrapolate a velocity field um, that you can see here on the right. So that's the, the 3D velocity field, um, of course, that's a very rough projection. Um, like it will preserve the quantity of flow in each of the branches and it will assume a quadratic flow profile. Um, but of course, like it doesn't strictly enforce boundary conditions and um, the, um, the flow vectors always point in the tangent vectors of the center line, which of course might not be the real flow field, um, but it turns out like that flow field and that pressure field um, is usually good enough to give you a initial condition for your 3D simulation that's already pretty good um, and gives you like a head start so you don't have to run as many 3D simulations or 3D cycles as you would if you were starting from zero initial conditions or steady state flow initial conditions. So I can highly recommend if you have simulations with RCR boundary conditions, uh, give that um, reduced order modeling a try, just calculate as many cardiac cycles as you want because it's super cheap. And then you just take the last cardiac cycle, project it to 3D, and then use that um, as initial conditions for your 3D model. And we want to do that automatically in the future in Semascular. They just have a button that says generate initial conditions, but we have not done that yet. So, but if you're interested in using that, you can just do it yourself um, as I just described. Um, and there's another way. Um, since all these simulation outputs are um, NumPy files, um, you can nicely use it within like a Python workflow. Um, so I'm, I'm going to upload all these um, PDFs on our lab website. But basically, you can just um, with one line in Python import those results. And then they are um, sorted by the physical branch in your model according to the center line. And then for each DOD node and for each time step, you have like a two dimensional NumPy um, array. And so you could use that, for example, let's say you want to um, tune boundary conditions, you could use that to like automatically extract the results and feed them back into your optimization loop. Um, and we also have um, a workflow of automatically creating and running those reduce order simulations. So if you go on GitHub, um, Dave has a repository called Semascular Tests, 
and he includes an example of how you can use uh, some vascular Python to automatically generate those models. So again, this would be something that you could use, for example, in a boundary condition tuning approach or for uncertainty for quantification or like any other uh, applications that you can think of. Um, and I'll also upload like a short um, short summary how you can generate those models in some vascular and what the results should look like. Um, yeah, let's see. Ah, okay, it, lo it looks like the conversion is still running in the background. Um, I think the reason for that is like this extrapolation step from center line to the 3D model takes a while because we need to figure out that projection. Um, so that's why there's a button that you can only do that if you want to do that. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a brief overview um, of what you can do with reduced order modeling in uh, Semascular. And yeah, if we stop the recording now, then you can ask some questions and we can go over them. <laughs>